Meet Dr. Frank Plummer. He's a renowned HIV researcher and the former head of the National Microbiology Lab of Canada. We asked him about his start at the lab, the importance of the facility, and the challenges he faced there. I uh, became scientific director of the National Microbiology Lab, which is part of the Public Health Agency of Canada, in uh, 1980. And it was, I left Kenya and moved back to Winnipeg. Um, uh, I continued the research in Kenya, but uh, I thought when I needed a more sophisticated laboratory approach in order to get where I wanted to go um, rather than working in the field in Kenya. It was an interesting challenge. The lab when I took it over was, uh, was very new. Uh, and uh, it had relocated from um, Ottawa to Winnipeg. And only, I think, something like 25 people uh, moved uh, from Ottawa to Winnipeg. So the lab was kind of underutilized, underpopulated. And I had a big building job to do, which was you know, a, a unique challenge and a very exciting opportunity. And the lab was responsible for uh, all aspects of public uh, health related to infectious diseases, from bacteria and foodborne problems to deadly viruses like Ebola. It has the only level four program uh, in Canada and one of the very few in the world. So we became the focal point for any uh, infectious disease outbreak, especially when the uh, agent's unknown. The first, uh, first big thing that we dealt with was uh, SARS in uh, 2003, when uh, this uh, new virus that had never been seen in humans before suddenly appeared uh, first in China and then by the time we had recognized that there was something of uh, this nature going on in China, it was in Toronto and Vancouver. This uh, severe respiratory illness uh, was uh, undiagnosable using uh, tests that for agents that we knew about. So we pretty quickly knew that uh, this was something totally new and had to take a different approach. And uh, so it was first uh, isolated, the SARS virus was first isolated by the Center for Disease Control in, uh, in the U.S. And then um, we isolated it shortly after that, like a day or two later. Uh, then we set off on a race, basically, to sequence this uh, virus, to sequence the whole genome. And in collaboration with the University of British Columbia Center for Genome Sciences, uh, we were the first, and Canada was the first, to sequence this. And it was a very, very exciting time. Very exciting time to, to, to discover this virus and figure out what to do about it and develop new diagnostic tools and then the, the scientific race to sequence the virus was also very exciting. And after that, uh, we went through a number of scares uh, related to influenza, which is, as, you, uh, as many people have heard, uh, you know, pandemic of influenza is one of the most feared thing in infectious diseases. Uh, the 1918 flu killed many millions of people around the world. We had a, a pretty severe test of that in 2009 when this H1N1 uh, influenza virus, which was totally new, emerged first in, um, in California and then in a the big outbreak in, in Mexico City. And uh, we helped the Mexicans uh, with their response. But by the time we knew it was in Mexico, it was already in Canada. There were uh, cases in, the, in Nova Scotia. So it happened just bang, 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 bang. Um, and it was basically we were the ones that more or less found the pandemic. It had already been reported in the U.S., but uh, we, we found it in Mexico and we found it in Canada. And then we knew it was pretty much going to be everywhere. In terms of uh, preparedness for uh, this kind of thing is extremely important. You need to um, have the scientific capability to respond to it, to make new diagnostic tests, to test new therapies, to make vaccines, hopefully. And uh, I think Canada is very well prepared. The National Microbiology Lab is one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world. To uh, illustrate how important the lab is in sort of the national and global response to these kind of threats, we've done three very innovative things uh, that come out of the lab, not, not by me, but by others. So the first innovation was to develop a mobile laboratory, sort of lab in a suitcase, or lab in 12 suitcases, really that can take the, take the lab to the patient rather than take a specimen to a lab somewhere in the United States or Canada. And that uh, has been incredibly important in the uh, responding to these um, outbreaks of viral hemorrhagic fever, uh, Ebola and, and Marburg, because uh, that shortens the time it takes to distinguish who has Ebola, which then you can take appropriate action to isolate them and treat them or has something else, and who would then be separated from those that have Ebola. 
the second innovation was um, uh, the development of a vaccine for Ebola, which uh, I think and most others think that it's the most promising uh, vaccine um, candidate out there. And it was developed uh, using a, um, a virus called vesicular stomatitis virus, which is an uh, infection of cows. It can infect people, but doesn't really cause any problems. And putting an Ebola gene in there uh, so that it fools the body into thinking they've seen Ebola, and that they develop appropriate immune response to that Ebola protein. Uh, and it protects uh, monkeys uh, from uh, challenge uh, 100% of, of the time if, if they're vaccinated before they're challenged with Ebola. And it, you can even have an effect uh, uh, post-exposure. So if somebody gets exposed to Ebola, you can still up to about, or animals get exposed to Ebola, uh, even up to three days later, there's still a very significant effect. So it can be used as kind of a therapy as well. The third innovation was uh, something called ZMAP or ZMAP, which is a cocktail of three monoclonal antibodies. Uh, that were uh, put together at the National Microbiology Lab uh, by a very creative scientist called Gary Covinger. Um, the uh, two of the antibodies that are in this cocktail uh, were uh, produced at the National Microbiology Lab, and the other was produced at uh, uh, the U.S. Army Institute for uh, Infectious Disease Research in uh, Washington. This cocktail uh, is very effective in preventing um, uh, Ebola infection in animal models and in treating it in animal models. And it has been used a few times in people, uh, most notably during this current Ebola outbreak when uh, uh, an American physician and an American nurse uh, uh, got Ebola uh, as they were looking after patients in, uh, in Sierra Leone. And uh, they received this treatment. And uh, from what I've heard and seen, uh, you know, it basically saved their lives. Uh, so there's a big rush on now to produce lots of this um, lots of this ZMAP uh, to respond to the current outbreak of uh, Ebola in West Africa.